So every YouTube channel comes with an analytics option, which allows you to check how your videos are doing and also to extract various features and metrics for comparison purposes. One of those options is the ability to scrub through your videos and see where people are rewatching segments or losing interest, skipping, rewinding, and so on. The blackjack video is fairly typical with a fall off at the start, followed by a fairly flat section as people watch the video and then a fall off towards the end. But there's something a little odd with the Flappy Birds video profile. And if you look very closely, you just might be able to see a section where people are pausing the video. And it's this peak here, of course. And if I scrub through the video to this point, you can see what it is. Neat speciation. Speciation, of course, is a powerful ability of the neat approach, which allows for multiple solutions to be explored in parallel. Networks are grouped by structural similarities, with separation being governed by a threshold function. I'll be taking that formula apart in a future video and doing a worked example. So this triggered me to go back and revisit my original implementation of the NEAT algorithm and check if speciation really does have an impact on the efficiency of the solution it finds. And efficient solutions is what NEAT does best, of course. That's what it's all about, starting simply and allowing complexity to evolve over time, if required. And removing overly complex networks from the search space is a part of this if they're not improving. And this is clearly detailed in the Ken Stanley original paper, where he talks about the one node exclusive OR solution and the percentage of times his network managed to find it compared to other solutions. And also the fact that it never failed to find a solution to the exclusive OR problem. Admittedly, it's an easy problem for a network to solve, but it does require at least one hidden node. So it's good for fault finding and checking your own solution. But does speciation really make a difference? In a set population, what is the correct target for the preferred number of species? Is there a correct number? I hadn't checked before, so I decided to try and find out. So I went back to my exclusive OR implementation and set the target for the number of species to a low level of 4. This is for a population of 50 networks in each generation. I got this set up to find the exclusive OR solution a thousand times and worked out the average number of hidden nodes in the solutions. I then repeated this for a species target of 5, then 6, 7 and so on, plotted them on a graph. I think you'll agree there's clearly a downward trend in the solution complexity as a function of hidden nodes required as we increase the target number of species in each generation. Now I say species target here because it's just that, a target. The actual number of species will tend to bounce around that number. If it's too high, the compatibility threshold will increase to drive the number down, and if it's too low, then it'll decrease to force the number up. You can see that in action here. For each generation, the number of species will vary, and the threshold for species inclusion will adjust to try and keep it on target. It's exactly the same approach that Ken details on his website. My implementation works fine, but wasn't achieving the same low hidden nodes average that Ken was achieving. It was then that I discovered an important principle. It's called read the manual. Males of our species seem to be genetically predisposed to ignoring this advice. But I went back to Ken's website and discovered a couple of things I'd skipped the first time around. First up is the approach he takes to species that are not improving. He gets rid of them. If a species hasn't improved in 15 generations, it will be penalized. He also has the concept of a survival threshold implemented. Only the top 20% of each species is allowed to reproduce. And then there's the weight mutation factor. Ken limits this to a factor of 2.5 and recommends that it never goes over 5. And then I discovered that Ken was playing fast and loose with definitions of 0 and 1. He distinguishes between solution and fitness in his implementation and decided that anything below 0.5 is a 0 and anything above it is a 1. What that means is that he considers this to be a solution to the exclusive OR problem, which is a lot easier to achieve than my own approach, which is a bit more exact, and explains why my implementation takes a lot more generations to solve it. My solution was also suffering from a bit of bloat, mainly because I wasn't penalizing species that weren't improving. Bloat is a major problem in genetic programming, and it results from genomes getting bigger and bigger without any corresponding increase in fitness leading to unwieldy networks that cannot be optimized further. NEAT avoids this by building up structures slowly, piece by piece, with each piece being tested carefully. So I implemented a function to penalize species that weren't improving. If its fitness didn't improve in 15 generations, I reinitialized all species members. This had a drastic improvement on the number of hidden nodes in the exclusive OR solution. I reran the test I'd done earlier to see how much improvement there was, and as you can see, there was a nice drop in solution complexity and moved it into the same range as Ken Stanley's original NEAT implementation. So, prompted by a request for a detailed worked example, I've decided to go back through my exclusive OR implementation and look at each section in detail, starting with a node and connection 
and building up to a final solution. We'll examine the concepts and rationale of key elements in the original paper, and we'll also look at how others have implemented NEAT by reviewing any published material I can find on the topic. Here, for example, is a paper detailing how they approached getting the node layers right in their implementation. I also want to check the effect the different components have on each other. Small changes to the weight mutation factors, crossover function, target species, population size, and so on, can drastically affect how long it takes to converge on a solution. But once complete, you'll have a class for a neat brain which you can then plug into games and evolutionary processes and watch your little creatures come to life. So if you're interested in that, you know what to do. And as always, thanks for watching.